Today we're building the console killer for around 500 buckaroos. So it's a little bit on the high end side, it's definitely a bit more than you would pay for an Xbox One X or a PS4 Pro, but at the same time this build should definitely outperform either of those consoles with flying colors. I should also mention this video is sponsored by Aerocool, so thanks to them for providing the case, as well as some goodies we'll take a look at later. But let's go over the parts. Starting with our CPU, we've got a Ryzen 3 2200G, this is a quad core four thread part, boosts up to 3.7 gigahertz, and it does feature integrated Vega 8 graphics. So it does have an iGPU on there, although we will be adding a discrete GPU to this build. But it is convenient to have onboard graphics for a number of reasons, like troubleshooting, or just having it as a backup should your GPU die for some reason with no immediate replacement. With some overclocking headroom and a Wraith stealth cooler out of the box, the 2200G is quite a bargain for just 100 bucks. We're pairing that with an ASRock B450M HDV motherboard. This is a fairly basic board. It only has two DIMM slots. That is the price you pay for not paying a lot. But for 60 bucks, you're still getting the B450 chipset, plenty of USB 3 ports on the back, and even an M.2 slot. So it's already better than the motherboard that Walmart used in their gaming PC. Now the memory kit we're supposed to be using for this build is a 16 gig dual channel kit of G-Skill Aegis DDR4 at 2800 speed, but Due to the Christmas rush, it has been delayed in shipping, and so it's not here yet. So we have a placeholder for now. This is the T-Force Nighthawk RGB. So it's 3000 speed, just a little bit faster than our Aegis kit. If the Aegis kit doesn't arrive here by the time we're ready to test this finished build, then I'll probably just downclock this kit to 2800, and that'll be the best I can do for now. But we did get that Aegis kit for 99 bucks. So not too shabby for a dual channel 16 gig kit. Moving on, we have a Corsair CX 450 watt power supply, which should be plenty of juice for this build. 80 plus bronze certified, fully black cables. It's not modular though, so we'll have to do uh, spend a little bit more time with cable management. Our video card is the PowerColor Radeon RX 570 Red Dragon, which uh, sounds like a model that Lyle would appreciate. The RX 570 is a fantastic entry level card for gamers looking to game at 1080p. And I think I snagged this one for about 145 bucks, which is definitely a low barrier to entry for anyone looking to get their foot in the door to PC gaming. We have a couple drives for storage, including a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive that we'll be using for our games and mass storage. And our boot drive is a 240 gig Silicon Power S55 two and a half inch SATA Rev3 SSD. I was able to snag both of those for around a hundred bucks total, but if you wanted to cut costs down even further and you were okay with having a smaller OS drive, I think you can snag this S55 in a 120 gig capacity for like 19 bucks. And finally, all of this hardware is going inside of the AeroCool Cylon Mini. This is a micro ATX case that you can pick up for 40, 45 bucks. And for that price, you get RGB and USB 3.0 on the front panel, uh, removable dust filters, and so forth. Again, links to all this stuff can be found in in the description below and thanks again to AeroCool for sponsoring this video. Now let's get building this 500-ish dollar console killer. So the build is done and it actually came out a lot cleaner than I thought it would. Um, I was surprised how well I was able to actually hide a lot of the cables, especially since we don't have a modular power supply uh, inside of a $40, $45 case. Like it looks really clean from this side. Even the back side, the cable management wasn't too bad. Obviously, if you have more devices connected, then things can get a bit hairy. But for the most part, building inside of this thing was really no problem at all. As you can see, we did not get the G-Skill Aegis kit in time. We're still using the T-Force uh, Nighthawk RGB sticks. And as I mentioned, I have downclocked those to 2800 speed, which is what the Aegis kit was rated at. It's also worth noting that I've overclocked the Ryzen 3 2200G ever so slightly to 3.8 gigahertz on all four cores. And uh, I could have maybe gotten away with a little bit more, but I didn't want to chance it. I forgot to mention this motherboard only has a single four pin EPS connector for the CPU power, so I didn't want to push it. But enough jibber jabber, let's see how this thing games. I've jumped into Doom, as you can see, and we are using the Vulkan API, and yeah, Vulkan on Ultra. Ultra settings, guys, 1920 by 1080, 
And look at that, 130, 140 FPS, not bad. GPU is getting a little warm. I'd like to see it a little cooler than 80. The nice thing about the system is that it has an AMD GPU, which means you could easily get a FreeSync supported display. That'd be a lot cheaper than an equivalent G-Sync panel. By the way, sorry for the Cherry MX uh, blue switches that I'm actually clacking on right now, if it's a little bit noisy. All these peripherals, in fact, including the gaming chair, are from Aerocool's sister brand. Or is that, is, that, is that the right term, sister brand? Brother brand? I don't want to be accused of being sexist. It is 2018 after all. But all these accessories are part of the Thunder X3 line. This is the AK7 keyboard. It's got RGB lighting, of course. You can also choose which Cherry MX switches you want with the keyboard. It's offered in a variety of flavors. And it also has an included wrist rest, which is pretty comfy. Also comfy is the RM5 gaming mouse. I thought this mouse was going to feel worse because it's a pretty cheap mouse, but um, it, I actually really like the shape. It seems like all these peripherals have some sort of teal accent on them, and the teal accent you see on the mouse is actually rubberized, so it has a pretty solid grip, not to mention Omron switches, which feel great. I'm shocked what kind of frame rates we're getting right now. We could probably scale up to 1440 and still get over 60 FPS. I'm gonna try it in a sec. The AH7 is the headset that I'm wearing. It's got a detachable mic, and I have the volume really low right now so I can actually hear myself talk on camera, uh, but they're super comfortable, and they look pretty cool from what I can tell on the little monitor there which is of course the most important part of any gaming headset. All right, while we're loading here, the chair also is very comfy. It's got adjustable armrests and stuff. They twist and turn. You can change the height. Oh, I'm already, I'm already as low as it gets. And yes, my feet can touch the floor. Shut up. But all these accessories from Thunder X3 are pretty darn affordable. So uh, if, you, if you're on a budget maybe, or just looking to save some coin and you really like teal, check them out. I'll throw some links in the description. All right, hold on, let's, let's switch this up. We're going to 1440, baby. Haha! -ha! just as I suspected, just over 60 FPS. I'm really digging the, uh, the, the price to performance here of this rig so far. Now granted, this is Doom and the Vulcan API, not every game supports Vulcan, of course. So why don't we switch gears here? to uh, maybe GTA 5. I always go to GTA 5 because it, it does a good job of taxing both the CPU and the GPU. It's also a very scalable game, so uh, regardless of the specs that you're rocking, as long as they're not super potato, you can usually tweak the settings enough to get the game running smoothly. So, all right, here we go. Graphics, 1920 by 1080. Uh, we have MSAA off. Let's leave it off for now. We'll, we'll turn FXAA off as well. And we've got pretty much a blend here. Uh, it looks like the game has already sort of, you know, configured uh, the settings that it thinks we should be running at considering our hardware. And it looks like a, a mix of, of high and very high settings. Texture quality is very high. Shader quality, shadow quality is at high. Grass is at normal, soft shadows are soft. Extended distance scaling hasn't been turned on at all. Let's just, let's just jump in and see what we get. Franklin, come on, Franklin. Holy moly, are we really getting like 70, 80 FPS in GTA 5? I'm just gonna get into the street, into the thicker parts of Los Santos. We'll see how performance holds up there. Now, I'll be honest, the game doesn't look quite as crispy as, let's say, oh wow, that was, wow. Always look at the road when you're driving. Let this be a lesson to all of you. As I was saying, the game doesn't look quite as crispy as it could because we don't have any sort of anti-aliasing enabled. That's for sure gonna tank our frame rate. Let's just see what happens. Did I mention the GPU's not overclocked? Well, I did now. I did max out the power limit slider though, just to make sure we've got a little bit more juice pumping through. I'm gonna see what happens if I turn MSAA on. All right, 2X MSAA enabled. That brings us down to, okay, so 2X isn't, it's not a game, it's not a game killer, but uh, you can definitely see that we've dropped maybe five to 10 FPS on average. But of course, I, I personally like the way MSAA looks a lot more than FXAA. Edges look a bit sharper, a bit more natural. I feel like only the most privileged and spoiled of gamers would, uh, would scoff at the level of performance that this $500 rig is pumping out right now. And I mean, if you wanna compare how this looks right now to the console experience in the same title, it's just, it's just, you, you can't. You just can't even compare it. The difference is really night and day. And I guess the moral of the story here is that you don't need to spend $1,000 plus to get that experience. You guys let me know what you think. I'm sure you've already whipped up your PC part picker lists and, and dropped them in the comments telling me what a terrible job I did and how yours is much better. That's totally fine, actually. Uh, the, the more options, the merrier for anyone who's looking to build something like this. But guys, thank you so much for tuning into this one. Again, links to everything featured in this video can be found in the description below. I wanna say a special thanks again to Aerocool for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you for watching it. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it, guys. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I'll see you in the next video.